Good day everyone, here is our video presentation. Is this for a group who picked President Rodrigo Duterte? First, let's get to know him well. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, also known as Digong Rodi Duterte, and the initials PRRD. He is a Filipino politician and the 16th incumbent president of the Philippines. He is the chairperson of the PDP-11. Did you know? Duterte is the first president of the Philippines to be from Mindanao and is the oldest beginning his term at the age of 71. The record was previously held by the late President Sergio Osmeña at the age of 65. And most of us believe in his popular campaign slogan when he ran for the presidency in 2016 that change is coming. But really change is coming? Or does it really happen? Now that the president is at the tail end of his presidency, many would claim that his administration has been characterized by change and some remarkable accomplishments. So let's tackle and identify the achievements in the field of science and technology of President Rodrigo Duterte. The first one is the Build 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 program, one of the noteworthy areas of change under Duterte administration has been infrastructures. Duterte shepherd the golden age of infrastructures of the Philippines through his Build 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 or BBB program by building railways, trains, subways, highways, roads, new ports, airports, bridges, and even building classrooms for students. With the Duterte administration entering its final year, the Build, Build, Build program continues to deliver its promise of creating infrastructures that improves the lives of Filipinos in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic and other challenges. Did you know that the Duterte administration, through the able leadership of former Secretary Mark Villar of the Department of Public Works and Highways, or DPWH, was able to construct the following. The second one is the Balik Scientist Act. Last June 15, 2018, President Rodrigo Duterte institutionalized the program with RA 11035 or the Balik Scientist Act. Then after three months, the DUSD crafted the implementing rules and regulations and MAC number 006 of the Balik Scientist Law. The Balik Scientist Program aims the following. The third one is the Philippine Space Policy. The Philippine Space Develop and Utilize Policy or the Philippine Space Policy will serve as the country's primary strategic roadmap for space development and will embody the country's central goal of becoming a space cable and space faring nation within the next decade. Did you know the first head of the Philippine Space Agency, Joel Marciano Jr., was appointed on December 5, 2019 by President Duterte. The fourth one is the DOST Develop Tech. President Rodrigo Duterte has approved two technologies that will help the government collect data or environmental hazards and assess situational for fast disaster response. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said Duterte approved the Department of Science and Technology or DUSD developed technologies during the cabinet meeting on Monday night. The fifth one is the Diwata 2. The Philippines' second microsatellite, also known as Diwata 2, was successfully launched into orbit via Japan's H2A launch vehicle number 40. The Diwata 2 boasts of upgrades 
such as deployable solar panels for increased power generation, enhanced resolution cameras, and a sun synchronous orbit that will allow fixed revisit intervals and a large area of coverage. Did you know? According to the Stamina 4 space, the Diwata 2 is currently orbiting Earth at an altitude of 604 kilometers with speeds reaching 7.56 kilometers per second. It will remain operational for two more years. The last one is the Anti-Hospital Deposit Law. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte on Thursday, August 3, signed into law increasing the penalties for the refusal of hospitals and clinics to administer appropriate initial medical treatment in emergency or serious cases. Republic Act Number. 10932, otherwise known as the Anti Hospital Deposit Law, provides that in emergency or serious cases, it shall be unlawful for any hospital or medical clinic to request, solicit, demand, or accept any deposit or any other form of advance payment for administering basic emergency care, for confinement, or for medical treatment, or to refuse to administer medical treatment and support to any patient. And for sure, there are some more achievements of his that we need to tackle. However, let's proceed on how President Rodrigo Duterte help shape the Philippines as a nation. In agricultural policy, he improved rice imports by signing the rice tarification law to ensure food security, granting free irrigation to small farmers. Then, he signed the Sagip Saka Act and created a trust fund for coconut farmers. He implemented an intensified campaign against terrorism and communist insurgency. He implemented, he implemented the construction of railways and skyway which will cut travel time and will decongest traffic in Metro Manila and provinces. He reconstructed the world famous Boracay Island back to its pristine state. He reconstructed Manila Bay. It used to be a dump site, but after the rehabilitation, marine life is back to the area. He raised the salary of military and police. He fired erring government officials. He banned smoking in public places. He asked for a pardon from foreign governments for Filipinos sentenced to death. Most of us say that President Rodrigo Duterte's term was the unlucky one. Since it happened in the years of pandemic, everyone has to be safe and away from COVID-19 virus. Even though his project continues, that's why it is not a waste voting for those who voted for him in the last 2016 election. That would be all. Thank you for watching. We hope you have learned.